Welcome back to Data Test Tutorials. I'm Carl and this video is about automation and automating data test itself. Let's first start with importing some random images into data test. If you go to the site and you slide and you'll see that there's a button called console. If you click on it, you have a complete console editor. This is a bit built in Python 2.7 script, which already has some things built in, which is, for example, NumPy, D and DL, what this is, I will show you in a second, and other things like Timebook. In order to know what we have built in in this Python console, just right click on it and check it out. So this, for example, D is just a short form for the current display, the display you see here on the right. Let's just go back to something where we see something. Okay, so this display you can exit it with, for example, display zero, run, yeah, doc zero, three files of blah blah blah, or just D. It is exactly the same. In order to access a display layer, you type D, which is your display, dot L. L would be the short form for all layers. Let's see. How this looks like if we print the shape of our display. Uh -huh. Three layers by this width and this height. Let's go back to the output again. Okay. All display data is stored as a NumPy array, which means you can, for example, easily access the maximum value, the minimum value, and mean value and so on. If you want to learn more, just google numpy array. Okay. To access a single pixel element, for example, you would do the following. Display, this is our current display. Layer 0, this is the first layer, this is where we are at the moment. And then, like in a numpy array, you say we want to modify the first, say, 300 pixels in Y. Oh, actually, this is X. And the first 0 to 400 pixels. And we want to decrease the value. So minus equal about, let's say, 400, 1,100, 400 counts. And here we go. Ah, we couldn't see it clearly, so let's say 1000. And here we go. Now this area is a bit darker than the rest. Maybe we don't like this idea, and maybe we forgot what we just did. In this case, we can go here to the undo button. As you see, there are eight different states of our script we can go back to. Let's go back to the first state, and the second state, and just another one, and now everything is gone. If you are unnerved by the fact that the full display is basically auto-zoomed every time when we change under Redo, you can go here to the Aspect Ratio button, and you can say, I don't want to lock the range. In this case, you can go to the range and easily go back to full as you like. So let's do an, a very simple image subtraction case just to show you how you can do some simple image processing tasks with data test. For this we want to create a new doc at display, image or video. Here it is. It is just an empty doc if you would print the display layer it's basically nothing. But let's say this display layer might be the difference of our first two images. Why would you be interested in this? Well, let's have a look at the difference of these two images. As we see, a few cells of this PV photovoltaic modules are sometimes bright and sometimes darker. Maybe we want to highlight these differences. So what we say, display.layer is equal to Display 0, because now we are referring to another display. Display 0, dot layer 0, 
this is our first layer, minus display zero dot layer one. And here we have it. Now we have a difference image built by the difference of the first two layer of display zero. You can also say it's the addition, multiplication, or whatever. You can be completely free in how you mess with image data in this program. You can also automate the execution of specific buttons. For example, you want to change the perspective or the view on a specific image, the intensity. Maybe you want to execute a filter every time when you import new data and so on. In this case, you just click on the import button and let's say uh, we want to click the access button every time when we have new data. This is maybe not necessarily the best example, but I guess it's good for you to get the point. In this case, we want to import new data in our current display. And it will tell you how it's already in this display. So, let's get some other images. This one, for example. Current image. This is a very good example because now I just try to import a picture within our display, although, as we clearly say, the image size is different. It now offers us three different methods to, to cope with these different sizes. We can either cut the bigger image, we can resize the smaller image to fit the bigger one, or we warp images together. What warping is, I will show in another video. Let's first just say we resize it. And this allows us to have this image within the other images. And as you see, there are no axes anymore. The reason is we executed basically this button when we had new data. How does this work? So, this is our display. These are all display tools. I can actually print these ones. What about this? Keys. Print. So these are all the current display tools we can access. If we load more, we can also get more displays to choose from. We access a display tool through the string. For example, the export button. In this tool, we can, can we do this as an example, access and manipulate even different parameters. For example, we can change the export button type and set the value, for example, from original to text. If we have text, ah, txt file. txt file. Let's execute this one. Okay, it is executed. In this case, we should see, ah, here we go. We just changed the value of this specific parameter through our console. Well, it doesn't sound very fancy, but you can see what more we can do. For example, we can import all built-in Python modules. This is a complete bundled Python environment, which already comes with a lot of nice modules, for example, number for auto-compilation. Let's see what else we find here. This is my tool. Autodict, Pandas, Pyfoam, Pygame. You can access these modules easily. Just click on the module you want to have. Hello. Now let's have a look at a more advanced example for scripting data. Just first, let's create an image. Scroll in, activate the console, and let's import one of the examples that we have here. For example, Conway's Game of Life. Let's just quickly have a look at the code. So first, we manipulate a few parameters. For example, we don't want to have auto levels, which basically sets from where to where to scale our image. We don't want to change the histogram and so on. We want to have the levels between there and that. And so on. And then just like a few basic Python commands which include the package numpy. There's even a definition and so on. And this is the one equation that we actually care about, the update equation, uh, the update function. At the very end you will see this built-in function called timed. Here we say that every 50 milliseconds we want to call this update function which basically 
for every cell execute one function which is process neighbors and the result looks like this it is the game of life you can easily change the current conditions the size of your frame the probability of something to happen and so on another example for example the mandel code example and here we have our basic mandel code function we have the variables defined we have a resolution defined set this down if your computer is not as fast and then a few more commands for example the new command which lets you create a complete new display set full screen which makes it a full screen hide title bar which hides the title bar and so on let's execute this one as you see here this shows us an interactive animation of the Mandelport example within data list. I think you got a good point of what is possible to do in data test and what not. I will use these console automation uh, features in the next two videos about camera calibration, so stay tuned.